Well, good evening, everybody. I'll call this meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. by recognizing the traditional keepers of this land and specifically our neighbors of the Alderville First Nation with a formal territorial acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that the municipality of Brighton is located on the Mississauga Anishinaabek territory and is the traditional territory of the Mississauga. The Council of the Municipality of Brighton respectfully acknowledges that the Mississauga nations are the collective stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. I will also remind everyone that we are meeting uh, in a hybrid protocol uh, due to COVID-19 public health protocols. Uh, we continue to meet with some members of council and some staff here in chambers and others joining us via Zoom. And the public is of course invited to join us through our YouTube channel at the Municipality of Brighton on the Municipality of Brighton website. I'll also note that once we go into closed session at the end of the meeting, the live YouTube stream will end for the duration of the meeting. And I am hopeful that is the last time I will have to read that. Let's hope. <laughs> we now move into the approval of the agenda with a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council approves the February 22nd, 2022 Council agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? And if so, please state the general nature thereof. And there are none noted. Are there any announcements this evening? Councillor LeBlanc. Yes, I'd like to. Uh announced that uh, Councillor Bateman is now the vice chair of the, the um, Lower Trent. Mary has been replaced with uh, Councillor Bateman. Well, congratulations, Councillor Bateman. Don't let the power go to your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are there any other announcements this evening? Thank you. Takes us to adoption of the minutes with a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Connect, seconded by Council Rowley, that Council adopt the February 7th, 2022 Council meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. A motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Tadman, that Council adopt the February 14th, 2022 planning meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Being none opposed, that motion is carried. That brings us to our public meeting with regard to the 2022 budget. And I will turn the floor over to Director Whittefield for a presentation. Director? Not a statutory public meeting. Is it statutory? We're good. Carry on. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Ostrander. Jessica's going to put the presentation on the screen for us. Thank you, Jessica. So annual budgets are legislated under the Municipal Act 2001, Section 2, 290. The process that we follow was adopted by Council in the form of a policy on October 20th, 2009. And the annual budget process policy was revised um, last year on June 21st. At that same meeting, Council received the pre-budget report for the 2022 budget and provided direction of the budget development guidelines. The first draft was presented to the Committee of the Whole on November 4th, and deliberations on the capital budget started and continued um, on the following meetings, November 22nd, 29th, and January 10th. We also deliberated, Council also deliberated on internal budgets and external requests. And then on January 24th, the Committee of the Whole deliberated on the second draft budget. All budget meetings were held by Zoom, Public consultation opportunities were provided at each budget meeting. 
through citizen comments and question period. So tonight's presentation will include um, the following items on the agenda, the impact to the taxpayers, the budget changes from 2021, budget pressures, where do your taxes go, local municipal tax comparisons from 2021, and the highlights from the 2022 budget. So due to COVID, assessments for 2022 are still being based on 2016 property valuations. We've also been notified that that's not going to change for the 2023 tax um, year. Um, the county's passed its 2022 budget with a tax increase of 3.11%. The province has announced that the 2022 residential education rates will remain at the 2021 level of 0 0.00153. And the municipal lower tier portion of your taxes will increase by 2.45%. So the blended tax rate, uh, the blended tax increase will be 2.40%. That represents an um, increase um, on a house that's assessed at $400,000, an increase of $120.93 a year. The total expenditures for 2022 is $41,336,508. $40, and they're il illustrated by department here. Environmental services has the most expenditures at just over 18.3 million and public works is next at approximately 9.8 million. The operating expenditures are $16,138,891. Public works makes up about 26.8% of the budget. Water and wastewater which are funded by user fees and not by tax rates, represent 15.93% of the total operating expenditures. The capital expenditures are $25,197,617. Again, water and wastewater are funded by user fees um, and they make up 62.6% .6 of the capital expenditures. Public works is 21.7% of the capital expenditures and that's mainly for roads and vehicles and equipment. This slide illustrates the, the user rate support budget change from 2021 to 2022. The water department operating budget is increasing mainly due to staffing complement. For capital, the underground infrastructure upgrades will be completed on Loyalist, um, Applewood, Addison and Napoleon. There's also a large project on Main Street that's being recommended um, and will be completed if the municipality is, is successful with the grant application. Also included are the completion of the water modeling study and initiatives that come out of the study, as well as a water and wastewater rate study as required under the Safe, water, Safe Drinking Water Act. And that's OREG 45307. Additionally, and um, environmental assessment will be undertaken to determine increased water capacity at the water plant and new security cameras will be installed. The operating budget is increasing for the wastewater department mainly due to staffing complement. Upgrades to the wastewater plant, pumping station, force main and water, wastewater modeling study are included in the budget with funding from reserves and external borrowing Security camera upgrades are also included. The underground infrastructure upgrades will also be completed on Loyalist, Applewood, Addison, and Napoleon. So this slide represents the, the changes from 2021 to 2022 for the tax supported budget. The total tax support budget is increasing by $3,072,442. The capital budget portion is an increase of just about $2.4 million. And the operating budget is increasing by 673,000. Uh, operating mainly due to changes in staffing complement and service delivery improvements in bylaw, increased applications in building and planning departments, policing costs, and the cost to operate the new medical building. Um, reserves will be used for capital projects for studies and, and major maintenance items, 
Grants will include the Federal Gas Tax, Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, and the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund. Fees and charges are also showing an increase. Um, these are anticipated, these revenues are anticipated to improve due to the past COVID related temporary closures. And there are revenues included that relate to, again, the new medical building on Dundas Street. So the budget increase for 2022 is $483,654. And the tax increase is $246,774. As illustrated, the budget increase is just the difference between the total operating and capital budgets over the prior year. During any given year, the assessment base may change due to growth, positive or negative. Positive growth occurs when there's a change in the pro property state, condition, or use, and is attribu attributable to things like new construction, additions, improvements, um, and changes in use, such as going from residential to commercial. Negative growth can also occur because of assessment reductions, changes in use, demolitions, and tax write-offs. Again, in 2021, has been the story for many years here in Brighton, um, we've had positive growth. And that provides additional tax revenue, as you can see on the slide, of $236,881. If we add that, um, growth of $236,881 to the 2021 tax levy, we arrive at a levy comparator of $10,068,621. Any increase over that in 2022 represents a tax increase. So of the, oh, the $483,654 budget increase, it's equivalent to 2.45% tax increase. Of that tax increase, 0.34% is capital spending, 0.33% represents the increase in external agencies and boards, and increases to service, local service delivery is 2.02%. This is an illustration of the budget increases by department. Um, the Public Works is contributing the largest tax increase followed by general government. This slide shows where your taxes go and not all of the taxes that are collected here in the municipality of Brighton stay here to pay for our local services. 39.3% um, of those taxes pay for our departments. Um, to provide the services to the community and 60.7% of the money collected goes to external agencies, um, policing, county and education. The table on the screen shows um, the changes to our municipal budgets over the last seven years. And one positive note is that your reserves, um, transfers to reserves are increasing um, as is your capital budget. And so that shows the commitment to um, capital infrastructure improvements. In 2021, Brighton had the third lowest tax rates in the county that has remained pretty stable over the last several years. On a property assessed at $400,000, the taxes in Port Hope Urban were $6,305. That's on the high end of the scale. On the low end of the scale, Hamilton Township, the taxes were $4,569 and Brighton's were $469 higher at $5,038. Now we're into the budget highlights. Um, some of the modernization projects that will be completed in 2022 a new generator at 35 Alice Street, um, self-contained breathing apparatus upgrades for the fire department, asset management software, security camera upgrades in several locations, upgrade to the PLC hardware and SCADA software at the water treatment plant, and an information technology master plan. Some of the highlights um, for service delivery enhancements include filling staff vacancies, the pop-up retail at King Edward Park in the um, former canteen, construct the pickleball courts, 
reconstruct and resurface several roads, continue with stormwater ma master plan initiatives, complete servicing to the industrial park, replace the force main and upgrade the pumping station and wastewater treatment plan upgrades. The four ro roads that are on this um, slide are the urban roads that will be completed in 2022, and they include the underground infrastructure replacement. There are some surface treatment roads um, that will be just single surface treatment and some roads that will have double surface treatment, which is more of a, a complete strip and base work. So the roads are listed on this slide um, for, for anybody to read. Um, the budget it will be on the um, website. The environmental services highlights for wastewater include the upgrade to the wastewater system, pumping station upgrades and force main replacement, security system upgrade, water modeling study, water and wastewater rate study, um, a utility terrain vehicle, and wastewater upgrades to the Addison Street, Napoleon Street, Loyalist Drive, and Applewood Drive. And water, I've already read these before, but the water modeling initiatives, um, which come out of that water modeling study, programmable logic controller and SCADA upgrades, water and wastewater rate study, security system upgrade, EA for increased water capacity, and the upgrades to Addison Street, Napoleon Street, Loyalist, and Applewood Drive. So we're partnering with boards and agencies again in 2022, including the DBIA, the Bay of Quinty Marketing, Docks by the Bay, Lower Trent Conservation, Quinty Transit, Brighton Public Library Board, cemeteries that are within our boundaries, and Quinty Economic Development. The list on the screen is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of the organizations that are re receiving support um, in the 2022 budget. So I just want to take the opportunity, Mayor Ostrander, to thank all of council um, for all the work, hard work on the budget and um, special, a special thanks to the senior management team for um, all your support and, and for providing all the information that we need to get these budgets in front of council. Thank you. Thank you, Director Whittefield. We appreciate your time uh, that you take to put this together for us and all the time that staff uh, takes to put the budget information together for council to make what we hope are good decisions on behalf of the good people of Brighton. Uh, Madam Clerk, I am aware that one person has asked to um, have, ask a question or make a comment with regard to tonight's public meeting. Yes, that would be Alex. Is that yes, Alex I Stein or Steen, sir? It's Alex Stein. Can you hear me? I can, Mr. Stein. You go right ahead. Okay, guys, I want to know, I really want to do a forensic audit of that budget because, listen, I'm a trucker coming from Ottawa, and my bank account was totally frozen. And on top of that, I've been called a racist. I've been called a traitor. I've been called uh, a white supremacist. When the only person that I know is a true racist or white supremacist is is our fearless hang on, prime hang on, minister. Mr. And this is, it really yes, has no, I understand this is a budget. No, it does. I've had my I've had my bank account frozen. I would like to know where is my money going? Why is Justin Trudeau allowed to freeze my bank account? Why are they allowed to impound? My Thank you. Are you aware of anyone else who may actually have a question with regard to our budget joining us this evening? No. Thank you. Does any member of council have a question? We did. Uh, spent a good deal of time on this budget at uh, Committee of the Whole, but I know that one member of council wasn't able to join us for some of those meetings. So, Councilor Bateman, I'll, I'll let you go first if you have any questions. Uh, just a question for the director, just so I can understand. When I'm looking at the pie chart under external services, or in the right wording, what does that cover? What, what is external agencies, I think, under the budget, 1.98 million or whatever? One point zero nine eight. So the external agencies that are in the budget um, would include um, the DBIA, the um, Lower Trent, uh, Quinty Access, Quinty Economic Development. Um, that list that I had read to you um, just a few seconds ago. 
Docks by the Bay. Yeah. Library Board too. The only follow up is it are consultants captured under that pie chart somewhere or is that consultants would be departmental. departmental. Okay. They, they go under whatever department. Okay. Correct. Any other questions from members of council? Councillor Anderson. I thought I heard you say uh, the assessment on properties will be extended to uh, 2023. That's correct. I've had emails from MPAC to that effect. So I think a lot of residents haven't heard that before. So it'll be extended till 2023. So that so we have some reprieve, but some at, at some point. I'm not. I'm not even sure I'd call it reprieve. It 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 actually doesn't help us uh, provide no, doesn't help. provide the best information for our residents or for the municipality in in terms of uh, where the money is drawn from. I know, and have, have we supported um, correspondence from other communities to, uh, to, to end that? I, I, did. I'm, I know we have at the county level, I'm just not sure if we have at the local level. I think we did. I think we did, and, but this, this is what I meant by reprieve. I think it's like a deferral. So <laughs> you've got more time to think about it, but... Uh, um, it's going to come and how and how it's going to affect in municipality is another thing too so in in theory um it shouldn't affect the municipality in in a huge way other than it provides some false information about what the value of your house is um based based on taxation current value um but the municipality tax is based on our need not based on the value of people's homes so if we need $25 million, that's what the taxation level will be, regardless of the value of people's homes. So in theory, if we froze our budget and the MPAC came out with new assessments, everybody's tax rate would go down, but they'd still contribute the same amount of money to the municipality. I think, the, and, and I think I agree with you, but I think there's a lot of confusion out there. And this will be a, a more news to add to the confusion, why it's being dragged on. Uh, yeah, I agree. I will forward that correspondence to all of the council. Yes. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Just on that note as well, um, as you said, we might have already kind of forwarded some correspondence. I wonder if we need to kind of remind MPAC because, as you say, it doesn't really affect what we do here, but it certainly will affect a lot of homeowners in yeah, this so municipal when we're no, going to crank another it's not MPAC. MPAC is being directed by the government of ontario to keep uh, keep rates fro keep assessments frozen so it's the government of ontario we would need to tap on the shoulder and ask them to to end that particular freezing okay so maybe that's where we need to direct some more correspondence yeah. to um i do have a question if i can ask at this time Please, um we spoke about um infrastructure on loyalist um there's four streets there I didn't read anything about Prince Edward Street, as I know we're partnering with the partnering with the county. Um, where does where does that fall into this next year? Or we're not the doing... actual construction will be twenty twenty three. The EA process will begin this year. Okay, so Prince the Edward EA Street. process is the responsibility of the county and not of us. Then, so okay, so it won't affect... no, I think we're partnering with that as well because because of the underground work and okay. sidewalks. And is and is that included in this budget at some? someplace under public work director either director through your worship uh yes uh, our portion will be included in our engineering budget within the public works thank you you're welcome councillor leblanc thank you mayor for your the comments that you said that some of the fears that i've heard from the people they say well the impact and the prices go up they actually believe that they're going to be paying a lot more taxes and i think that would be a very good comment or to put in our local newspaper and explain it better. And that would be my question because it would eliminate a lot of stuff because if we're going from homes that were within 2016 were 300,000 and now they're gonna be worth a million. Yeah. So now they're saying, well, I was paying 400,000 or 5,000 at, at 400,000. What am I gonna be paying at a million and I'm on a fixed budget or a retired pensioner that came here. So that should be explained to them that even though your house is worth a million, you're still gonna be paying your 5,000. It, it, it is it is tough to explain, but yes. Uh, yeah, it's will, very tough to explain. I, yeah. I think maybe um, I will work with the director and um, 
maybe both uh, uh, Mr. Hagerman and Ms. Campbell at the county on some communications around that, because I think it would be good from both levels of government to have that information put out there that, in fact, when we ask for X number of dollars, it's the same value we're asking for from each property owner based on the level of assessment of their home. So if your assessment goes up 100%, in theory, everybody's will go up 100%. It's only if your house is assessed at an extra value will you end up actually paying that much more. But that's, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, message to communicate. Yes, Director? it is, but it should be communicated. I agree. Director? I think it's also important to note that the new houses that are coming on are, are actually being assessed back at a 2016 right. level. They're not being assessed at today's value. So all, all housing in across Ontario is being assessed at 2016, regardless of when it was built. Right. Councillor Anderson. Well, you said two levels of government or three levels. I don't know. I think I, I'm just referring to the two that collect that depend on property taxes. I, I think part of the, uh, this report that would be given to the public should be, include a, uh, a statement or a report from the provincial government why they're holding it off another two years. Well, I might not disagree with you, but that would be up to the provincial government. You would disagree with me, but <laughs> <Will not. laughs> it, it's, it could create uh, a backlog of some hardships if they don't have a plan. Yeah, I just... I. I I don't think that's the case. If, if my house, if housing in Brighton is assessed at 10% more, 20% more, whatever the value is, when the assessment levels are unfrozen, then everybody will rise. Everybody's assessment in theory will rise at that level. And so in theory, their tax rate will decrease by the same level because we're only required to collect $5,000 from each household or whatever the number is based on the assessment. The municipality won't won't ask for more. The municipality won't bill for more money <laughs> because your assessment went up when we don't need more money. We only need the money we need for capital and operational costs through the budget. It's why we it's why we tax based on budget, not based on a taxation rate. Okay, so that would be the clear message, and 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 to put uh, residents at ease by with that type of a statement. Sure. But I'm, I'll, I'll believe it when I, I see it. I would hope so, but we'll see. And yeah. that's why I'll work yeah. with the director and the communication folks to see if we can come up with a good message. Yeah. Councillor Bateman, did you have another question? Uh, I was just going to ask the director, and I don't expect an answer tonight, and I wouldn't put you on the spot for one, but is it possible at some point to get a breakdown on, because the consulting fees are lumped into departments, on how much we spend as a municipality on consultants? I, I think I'd be, I'd like to see if we're trending up, trending down, because We've staffed up, so I almost expect that number to go down a bit over time, proportionally, but whatever. Is that possible, Director, to get that information? So to be clear, the, just the 2021 consulting fees, the total consulting for 2021? Or do you want a comparison? Or, or do you want the budgeted amount for 2022? I don't want you to have to do a whole bunch of work. You'd be able to tell us whether we're trending up or down without. Going so, a lot so perhaps 2020 and 2021 to give us a comparison. Mm -hmm. Councillor LeBlanc, did I see your hand? No, Councillor Rowley. Uh, thank you. Wondering if uh, the increase to um, that we approved to docks by the bay has been included all of this, Linda? Director. So uh, we discussed that at the last council meeting, as I recall, um, and we thought about how we could fund it. And we, we said we would bring that forward in March when we bring forward the new agreement um, that we didn't include it in the budget, but there were, were ways that we could fund it, um, whether it's um, putting reserves um, um, toward it or um, removing that $12,000 that you have reserved for more um, grants and aid requests, that type of thing, that there's, there's some recommendations that staff can bring forward at that time. But the base amount of 25 is in this budget. And that's yeah. correct. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just concerned about the extra. Right. So that's good. Thank you. Um, a couple of other questions and maybe to do with um, water, wastewater. We just recently added um, 
PLC system and the new SCADA system. Was that something that was of an urgency this year? Is that something that we could have like spread over in an extra year or so? Um, I believe we received a report that it was a must do this year. Okay, thank you. Anything else from members of council? Go ahead. I did, sorry. Yep, no. uh, we approved earlier the uh, capital budget regarding vehicles and everything. That's all been kind of approved and those tenders have all gone out. We're, all right. We're committed to all of that at this point. We, we committed to the capital budget well in advance of right. at the passage of, of right. the budget, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, perhaps an answer to the question, have the RFPs, et cetera, gone out? Director? Three year worship, uh, yes, and some have already been awarded as well. And there's another report before you tonight for yeah, the we'll backhoe. See, we'll see. We'll see in a couple minutes. Hopefully, another one coming up here. Yeah. Anyone else, uh, Councillor Tadman? Did I see your hand? No, you didn't. Perfect. I like that. <laughs> um, so I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Tadman. The council received the comments from the members of the public. At the February 22nd, 2022 statutory public meeting regarding the 2022 budget. Councillor Bateman. I was just going to ask, considering we already had that one that you had to disconnect, do we even have to do that? Um, well, we will receive the comments. We're not supporting anything. We're just, we're just saying, essentially, we've held a public meeting. <clears throat> we, we heard them, and then we stopped hearing them. <laughs> uh, any discussion from members of council on the motion? Those in favor? And being none opposed, that motion's carried. We have no delegations this evening. Madam Clerk, are you aware of anyone joining us for citizens' comments? No, thank you. That takes us to staff reports. The report is uh, prepared by Mr. Linton. Is Eric here? No, Mr. Parkinson, do you have anything to add or highlight on the report? Not at this time, Your Worship. Thank you, I have a motion. Moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Connect. The Council received the staff report for one new 2022 four-wheel drive backhoe. And further, the Council approved the purchase of one new 2022 four-wheel drive backhoe loader in the amount of $221,933.47, inclusive, inclusive of the expensed portion of the HST to Toramont Industries Limited. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councillor Rowley. Uh, we're replacing... Um two other units, are they going to be auctioned off? Is that the plan for those? Director? Through your worship. Uh, yes, that's the plan. They'll be put on gov deals and surplus. May I ask another question regarding, um, what do we do with the, um, the dollars that we receive back when we auction off vehicles? Where, does, where do those monies go? Director Whittefield? We have a policy. Um, on reserves and any monies that we receive from the sale of our surplus equipment goes directly to departmental reserves, depending on which department has that equipment. So any monies that would come in would go to the public works reserve regard because it's their vehicles are getting rid of. Is that what you're or saying? Or if it's a fire vehicle, it goes That's to fire I mean. and parks, yeah. et cetera. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from members of council? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. Just the council follow up list for January 2022. Motion moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Connect. The council received the council follow up list. Is there any discussion? Council Rowley. Thank you again. Uh, item six uh, staff to provide report. Re uh, concerning public space recycling. Uh, it says that it's still active. It seems to me that we had decided that um, along with the DBIA who uh, sent correspondence saying they were not in favor of this project at all, that council had decided the same thing that we were going to kind of just drop that program. Director? That is correct, Your Worship. So Madam Clerk, uh, are, you, are you in custody of this follow-up list? You can remove that then. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything further from members of council? Councilor Bateman? I was gonna, for the CAO ask regarding the one that was on the follow-up list for the stormwater pond up in Orchard Gate, if we have determined if it's ours, theirs, or because that will have a budget implication somewhere down the road if it is ours. CAO Castleman? Through your worship, uh, still in process, uh, uh, complicated file, uh, uh, significant uh, request uh, through that notice of motion, uh, gonna take some time to get it done. Uh, we have conflicting uh, priorities that uh, we're dealing with. Uh, we'll try and get to it as uh, soon as we can. Thank you, CAO. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, number 11, uh, we did complete that in 2021. I see the clerk is making a, making a note. Thank you. And then I have a question about uh, number 15. Go ahead. Um, I believe we've been waiting for correspondence back from the family on this, and I'm not sure if we've received it, but uh, if we haven't received approval, we may want to uh, drop that as well. That's my understanding that we have, have, we, we have received correspondence from the family and they did not want us to carry forward. Director? Uh, through your worship, I reached out to the OPP and the military. Um, the military was going to reach out to the family and if it was a positive result they'd get back to me and and to date they have not thank you does council wish to have that removed from the follow-up list i'm getting head nods so we can remove that from the follow-up number 15. thank you anything further go ahead councillor bateman uh, just a follow-up to the deputy deputy mayors on number 11 and i know this is just going with a follow-up list is that something we're going to look at doing again Possibly this year, because I think it was successful last year, wasn't it, for the most part? I, I believe the, the request is for an annual initiative, so it will happen okay. every year. We just don't need to keep it on a follow-up list, but I'll ask Mr. Hagerman if that's on his uh, list of things to do for 2022. Mr. Hagerman. Yeah, through yourself, the mayor, <clears throat> very successful. I think the community got a lot out of it, so we'll do it around the same uh, date as we did it last year, absolutely. So the intent is to carry on annually with that project? Yes, Thank you, Mr. Hagerman. Anything further from members of council? All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? The motion is carried. That brings us to notices of motions and motions, and they are all motions this evening. Uh, the motions before me do not include the, um, a lot of the verbiage there, just the directions. So I will just read what uh, has been signed in front of me. It's moved by Councilor LeBlanc, seconded by Councilor Rowley. The council directs staff to establish a cap bylaw in the municipality of Brighton. Councilor LeBlanc, this is your motion. Would you like to speak to it? <clears throat> I have been approached over about two years about nuisance cats or, or uh, feral cats and what the town does with them. It's not part of our bylaws, it's not part of our issue. I talked to the deputy clerk. We don't have it as part of our, our attachment for, for animal shelters and where to put them if we do catch them or if we have to go get them. But then I looked at Trenton has one, just passed one. The other municipalities have. Some of the residents called me up, sent me a whole bunch of photos, which I listed on the, on the pages. So. With that, they did a lot of homework. They got me a list of all the different cat bylaws. So I looked at it and basically if we have one for dogs, we have one for coyotes, we have one for farm animals, we have one for chickens and cats are there. If you only have three dogs or you have one for, you gotta go get a ticket for a pound. But some people in some of the apartments have excessive more than three and four and eight and 12 cats. So some of the neighbors have this. So Somewheres, if there's a permit and they want to have 12 cats, they would come and get a permit to make it a pound so they can carry more. It's just that if you're going to have it for one animal, they say fairly you should have it for the other. So I said I would bring it in front of council and make council let council make a decision on it. Yeah, that's what I did. That's why it's here. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in favor of the motion? Anyone wish to speak against the motion? Question, go ahead. Uh, thank you. So um, in the motion I have in front of me, it says that we received a letter 
And I'm concerned that we're looking at putting together a bylaw because of one letter. That's all I have in front of me and that's all attached to the, um, that we have attached. So um, I'm curious um, from staff, if uh, we receive regular complaints and concerns about cats and uh, if a bylaw is warranted, I'm not sure what staff member would like to answer that, but I'm whoever would receive those complaints. I guess I would ask uh, CEO Castleman or Director Walsh if they have a response to that. I'll, uh, I think we'll do a, do a bit of a tag team. I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, <laughs> uh, my experience over the years is uh, that uh, we receive uh, concerns and complaints that are brought to our attention. Uh, sometimes it's one person, sometimes it's 23 people. Uh, typically, when you have a number of concerns that are raised by a number of people, or the same concern raised by a number of people, you react. Um, uh, my experience is that uh, if you have one complaint uh, and it has merit, move on it. If you have one complaint, um, it's all about balancing um, priorities. And is it a big issue? I've, I've heard it through this uh, venue over the course of the last uh, couple of uh, months. Uh, prior to that, not brought to my attention in the past three years. So I question how big an issue is it in right Thank you, CAO. Director Walsh, do you have anything to add? Uh, excuse me, Mayor Council. I did confer with the bio enforcement officer on the degree of the problem, and he does respond to a CAD issue about once a year, he indicated. Uh, we had further conference with Pierce Animal Control official who does administer this bio part for, um, in the city of Quinney West. And he expressed some caution that once you uh, have a, a CAT control bylaw, and there is a complaint, then there might be an obligation to live trap the cat, to take it to humane society. And once it's there, there is uh, an obligation to maintain the cat's health uh, through that, through the, you know, a licensed vet, and that becomes a municipal cost. So it can become a rather a costly adventure for the municipality to, to pass a cat and did, control and did the, the animal control contractor indicate uh, an approximate how much more this might cost the municipality to go down this road? He didn't have the exact numbers yeah. uh, on, his, uh, on his sleeve to quote to me, but uh, staff can do further re research on that if council so wishes. Thank you, Director Whittefield. Is anything budgeted for uh, additional bylaw enforcement with regard to cat control? No, not Thank at you. this time. Thank you. Any other questions from members of council? Councilor Bateman? Uh, you mentioned animal control contractor. Is that something that we're paying for in the Actually, I didn't think we had our own here, so we contract that out to somebody. We yeah, for dogs only. So, so is that something the municipality calls for, or a resident has access to that number to say, I have an I, animal on I my I believe yard. the public has access to that number. Okay. I believe it's on the website. Yeah. Councillor Anderson. It doesn't sound like we need to add another bylaw that, uh, that we're going to have to enforce, and by promoting it, it'll probably become more of a, a demand item, uh, the more people know about what's available out there in the way of a service, then uh, we just might be shaking up those cats out there. But anyhow, I, I don't think we need another bylaw to, to deal with this from what I heard as far as about the number of uh, concerns there is about it. I'm sure there are concerns, but a lot of people can deal with them themselves. If it's a neighbor's cat, you usually can speak to the neighbor and say, maybe your cat's bothering my cat or something. But anyhow, I don't think I want to vote for that tonight. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I can't hear when uh, uh, the CAO speaks. I don't know whether his mic is not working, but I didn't hear anything from the orchard gate and I didn't hear anything the last time he spoke. So I was just wondering if, if his uh, mic is working. Uh, thank you, Councillor Tadman. His mic is working. I'll just ask that the CEO draw his microphone closer when he does speak. Thank you. Thank you. I won't ask him to repeat the Archer Gate thing. I can find it out later. Thank you for that. The, the answer was essentially um, they're working on it, uh, but it, it's going to take some time. It's a complicated issue and other priorities have uh, taken precedent over that one. I, I because think it was right. asked about over a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. 
Councilor Bateman. Uh, just a follow up to the animal control. Is it possible that we can put that out on the website frequently? Because I think there's a number of residents that don't realize we have that option, that if they have feral cats or whatever animal, that there is a number that they can call. And it's not on this vein and it's not in this motion, but I think at some point we're going to have to look at our dog one as well, because I don't know if others have received the complaints or saw them or seeing them. So the, so the, yeah. animal, the animal control is only for dogs in Brighton right oh, now. Oh, so it's not for, so it's only for dogs. So is that something that but we, we can look at as a municipality? And then if somebody makes the call, then they can look after that as well. Mr. Hagerman, would you, uh, through the CAO, of course, would you be kind enough to communicate uh, with, with the clerk and the CAO and see if we can have some communication around our animal control bylaw and who to call if you have an uh, issue with a dog on your on or around your property? Yeah, we can put something together. Absolutely. Thank you. Just to follow up, Mayor, the, the complaint I get the most of, and I'm sure others are hearing it and seeing it, are, and not all dog owners are doing it, it's the number of people that are not picking up after their pets when they go for walks, which is really a slap in the face, because if I'm not mistaken, the municipality purchases the doggy bag for the station, so it, it's twice as bad when they're using the bags and then flinging them in trees. Not all dog owners, don't get me wrong. The majority of them are really good, but there's a few that are making it really bad. Is that at the dog park? Like it's on the sidewalks, it's in the trees, it's on the bushes, and it's only a handful, a small percentage doing it, but they're still doing it. Right. Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to ask a question regarding the contract as well with our dog catcher. Do we pay per catch or do we pay an annual, do we give an annual lump sum and then it's just collect as, catch as many dogs as you can or do we pay per dog? Um, Director Walsh, Director Whitfield, do we have an answer to that? It's a bit, it's a bit off the topic, but we've gone down a squirrely road. Anyway, we get back to council on that. We'll get back to council. I thank believe you. it's a mixture of both. Yes, thank you. Anything further on a cat bylaw? All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion's defeated. Brings us to a motion on the concept of a traffic study for Ontario and Raglan. It's moved by Councilor LeBlanc, seconded by Councilor Rowley. The council directs staff to consider a traffic study at the intersection of Ontario Street and Raglan Street, east and west, to determine if a four way stop or a roundabout is warranted. Councilor LeBlanc, this is your motion. Would you like to speak to it, sir? Yes. I was approached by a number of residents about speeding on Ontario Street and large trucks and truck routes. And uh, he was supposed to come and speak tonight to it, but uh, apparently he's on a Zoom meeting or he was supposed to do it and he missed the timeline to, uh, to come and talk about it. And a number of the residents. There's also a number of emails on file about the speeding on Raglan going to Ontario Street and uh, to slow the stop. So where they come up with, and we, they talked about it. They had, uh, and I talked with them, they looked at Raglan and Ontario Street was a place that basically it's 100 feet wide you could put a turnabout, a roundabout. You could put a four-way stop or a stop sign to stop the, the traffic. Also in Raglan, when going through there and going across, twice I was passed by a black Jeep going exception speeds. And uh, apparently the OPP are also looking for this black Jeep that speeds on, on Raglan and going through it to a, a different site. Talking with them. So when I looked at it and I bought my pass to the park, and then when I looked what would solve Raglan is basically the long speed bumps, not the short one, the long one like we have in, in Presque Park, but also for a truck route with all the new construction and how it is, is Raglan gonna be the truck route, which one it is, and how to, to slow some of these vehicles down that are speeding down Ontario. You, you stop them at the front, you stop them at the back end. It's just something to look at which the residents on Ontario Street wanted and the residents on Raglan because there's a number of emails about Raglan, a lot of them from the different residents that are there. So if you're going to address one, might as well you address both at the same time. And I know that the answer is, well, you see speeders call the OPP. Well, 
unfortunately, 95% of the time, the police show up to write the report. They're not there at the scene of the crime unless they do have a speed trap. So let's be a little bit preventive here and let's try to slow them down. So if you look at the one where snow plowing, the speed bumps and in the park, and or they have somebody that doesn't. So if it can be done, we should be able to do it for small parts of our town. When I went to Belleville- Sorry, I'm just, <clears throat> we're speaking to the motion about a traffic study. Yep. Okay. okay. Just, just to look at it, I'm just giving concept of where the study could be. Right. If it, if it is passed by council, it won't be. Right. If it's not, it's been brought forward. And then if the residents come back and talk to me, I can say it was brought to council and it wasn't passed. Fair so, no problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, any members of council wish to comment? Thank you, Councilor Bateman, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna ask if the mover and the seconder, you know, I'm not sure if you can even do this now, if you'd look at an, a friendly amendment on this, I wouldn't wanna pigeonhole ourselves looking at a four-way stop in just one location because Ontario Street is a long street. And by the time you get to Raglan, all your intersecting streets have already taken place. I think Presque Gate is the only one after that. If you'd be open to looking at where the best spot is to put a four-way stop to slow them down on Ontario Street. And I spoke to the director of planning about this. If at the same time, they could look at, say, Raglan Street and even Cedar Street for that matter, making it the same as Stephen Street in Brighton where it's residential, no heavy trucks and designate Butler Street as your heavy truck street since you already have the home building center there and they have to keep utilizing that. And then we've already passed in the budget, you're gonna deploy the traffic calming measures on Ontario Street. And if they don't work, then we can further look at perhaps speed bumps, voter rate or whatever council decides on who's sitting around this table when it comes to it. So there is a, a request for a friendly amendment, Councillor LeBlanc, this is your motion. Essentially to change the words uh, at the intersection of Ontario Street and Raglan Street um, to read something to the effect of to identify the best place for traffic controls on Ontario Street. Yes. Could we also add Raglan Street to that? For traffic controls? If we're doing an amendment. It's, it, well, amendment. If we're doing a friendly amendment, it would be your friendly amendment. It's your motion. So yes, yeah, yeah, I would like to add, because I, I read more, more emails on Raglan Street than I do on Ontario Street that I've been approached by the residents on Ontario yeah. Street. Thank you. Councillor Rowley, are you okay with that as the seconder? Uh, yes, I am, uh, Mayor. I really kind of signed that in place of Councillor Tadman who wasn't here. So she really is the seconder on this motion, but I, I'm in agreement with that. Just, I signed it in her absence, really. Madam Clerk, given that Councillor Tadman is in attendance, it's okay to keep her as the actual mover. So I have read it, and for the record, I have read this as Councillor Rowley seconding the motion, but it is in fact Councillor Tadman who brought the notice with Councillor LeBlanc. So we will leave Councillor Tadman as a seconder. And so Councillor Tadman, I will ask you, are you okay with the friendly amendment? Yes, uh, in the original, it, it did include uh, both, uh, as far as I know, the Ontario it, Street and Ragland Street. It, it mentions both, that's correct. Questions or comments from members of council? Councillor Bateman. Uh, the second friendly amendment to look at Raglan Street, is that gonna to have staff look at implementing no heavy trucks and make that residential area only? Uh, that's not included. Would you like that included in your friendly amendment? Yes, I would. Councillor Tadman, are you okay with that as a friendly amendment? Yes, uh, and staff will bring back a report on that, that's for sure. That's correct. It would be to direct staff to consider a traffic study. Yeah. That would include those things, yeah. yeah. Councillor Anderson. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe those developments on Ontario Street are, are going to have traffic studies done uh, and brought forward with, to do with the developments on, of Ontario Street. So that may happen at the same time. So if we could be getting into a cost here where the developers are going to be doing this. And the other thing is uh, we haven't got the report yet on uh, calming measures uh, for the municipality as well yet. And that, I think your motion was to have that come forward at some point. So maybe that can be tied in. So we've got a lot of motions going on here, but, and, I, and I'm not being disagreeing with doing something to slow down the the traffic, uh, not allowing trucks, that's, that's, I don't know where they're gonna go, how they're gonna 
get down Ontario Street, but um, things like that will would really be required with a more of a, a major traffic study in that area. And I think it's going to be done, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think Paul might be able to, our planner might be able to answer this question. Isn't there a study going to be done on Ontario Street anyhow? So I think there's two questions there, Director Walsh. How many studies have been done and peer reviewed to the municipality's satisfaction with regard to traffic along Ontario Street? And how many do we anticipate uh, coming up in the relatively near future? Sure, so we had traffic impact studies uh, submitted uh, with respect to Ontario Street for the Brighton Meadows subdivision. And that has been uh, peer reviewed. And um, in fact, they had to rejig their subdivision uh, around quite a bit with its interior layout due to the um, conclusions related to the traffic impact study. And we anticipate more studies coming in for the developments at 214. They haven't submitted a complete application yet, but uh, that's anticipated. So I'd say that uh, really just the Brighton Meadows uh, subdivision, that's the one that's located north of Raglan and west of Ontario that we've had uh, that uh, study done. We've had some traffic briefs for some smaller developments uh, that are coming in. Um, but I might, uh, doesn't mind, I might tag team uh, Mr. Scott Poole, our manager of infrastructure, who has been uh, stick handling some of the uh, engineering issues. We, hang on, Mr. Poole? Uh, yes, I, I think it would be good to have maybe even increase the scope of what you're talking about here. Um, we have an intersection uh, problem at Ontario and Main Street. We have also a poor intersection at uh, the end of Harbor Street and Presqu'Isle Parkway. Um, it would be good to look at the entire scope there and maybe through Italy and Raglan as, as well. Uh, there, the studies that have been done previously, the studies that are going to be done, all kind of look uh, at their own issues. They look at the impact of that particular development, whereas it would be better to have an overall uh, study of where the future is going here. Thank you for that. Councillor Anderson. I think you make a good point there because uh, that study could overlook the, the entire scope of all of these developments, whether they're, the application hasn't come forward or not, but it's pretty obvious that somebody's going to build in if, if we approve it in, the, in those areas. Um, so in, in light of uh, that's before us tonight, uh, we were talking, uh, you mentioned uh, Councillor uh, Doug, uh, you mentioned about uh, speed, not speed bumps. You called them something else. To, did you mention speed bumps? He did uh, on Raglan Street. He was referring to the, the round, the okay. large round ones that we yeah, would but see. This was all going to be part of this, this calming uh, proposal or, or suggestions, recommendations that was going to come forward. So can we put this all together under one uh, umbrella and where it would say maybe be less cost involved uh, with uh, doing it in multiple piecework type sure. studies with uh, with with the friendly amendment and I apologize for interrupting I'm sorry to this. with the friendly amendment it, um, it directs staff to consider a traffic study to identify areas on Ontario Street and Raglan Street for traffic control uh, would that include Harbor Street the Harbor Street in intersection is, is that Ontario Street that goes down to Harbor Street or is that Presque Hill Parkway or Presque Hill, whatever it's called? It's Ontario. Yeah, I think it is too. But it's it, Ontario. You know, I, think they change, I think they change over together at that point. Right. So, but staff understands that we want the full length from essentially the Lake Shore to Main Street yeah. identified for possible um, study and an option to limit um, and include an option to limit and further that the study include an option to limit truck traffic on Raglan Street. Is that, go ahead. 
I, was gonna, I would look at Cedar Street as well because they're both residential areas and Ontario Street would have to remain your truck route because you have the provincial park and the trailers going down there and both Cedar and Raglan have park coming off and they're both built up now and finished. Mover and seconder okay with adding Cedar Street to that last bit. How about the whole town? Right, there it is. <laughs> on, 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 to this, <laughs> on to this one on the... Uh, Ontario Street to Highway 2 to Main Street. Yeah. That was one, something that Councillor uh, Anderson had brought up about two, three years ago, about a street like there to be looked at. But when I talked with the residents and they called me up and they talked to me, they wanted to start a petition on Ontario Street and go house to house. I told them not to bother because we didn't need another petition that I would bring it forward and council would make a sound decision on it. There you go. Okay. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I think uh, there's a bigger picture here, and we did have a motion recently about um, traffic calming um, measures uh, because we hear about speeding all the time, and also with all the development that's going on, um, uh, each individual development does have a traffic study, uh, but uh, there is something to tying it all together. I'm just not sure. We have two motions that talk about traffic studies here tonight, and, and I don't know if there's a better way to go about this, and I'm open to suggestions on that, but um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, uh, the motion says that we're directing staff to consider a traffic study. Are we asking them for their opinion as to whether we should have one, or are we ask, actually asking for a traffic study? It's two very different things. Um, so that's my question number one. And then my question as well is, uh, will a traffic study, we, we talk about speeding um, and the volume of traffic, will a traffic study um, give us ideas as far as whether we need um, four-way stops or, or I believe a, a roundabout is mentioned here or traffic calming measures? D does the study lay all that out for us? Uh, just so those are my two questions right now. Mr. Poole, would a study lay though that kind of information out for the for the council consideration? Yes, if you set the terms of the scope of work, does that lay out? And so my question is, because this would be unbudgeted, it's not contemplated in uh, the 2022 budget. Does anyone know how much this would cost, give or take? Oh, we've got two hands up. Director Parkinson. Through your worship, perhaps it would be more efficient if we lump all of our traffic concerns into one project, try to develop a cost for that project and estimate what it's gonna be, bring that before council to see one, if we can afford it and two, how to fund it and how to move forward as a larger scope rather than intersections here, intersections there, speed bumps here, speed bumps there. Try to come up with a community approach uh, to address so you're, a number of uh, intersections that are of concern. So that would include the next uh, motion that we'll be considering as well with regard to Baldwin. and Queen. That would be correct, yes. So let me ask the mover and seconder, would they be okay if we directed staff to prepare a report to council's consideration um, for a scope of work for traffic studies, for, for a traffic study for concerning intersections in the municipality of Brighton? Obviously, they are aware of two that we're concerned with. Um, and then we add Main Street on Ontario Street. We add Ontario Street and Harbor Street to that and Baldwin and Queen. And then they could come back with a, a larger scope of work that would probably save us a couple of bucks rather than going down the road of two, three or four traffic studies. Councillor LeBlanc. Only difference on Harbor and Queen, that is a serious safety issue, health and safety issue. On Baldwin and Queen? Baldwin and Queen because you get a blind hill coming from the south to the north where people are speeding and it's, there's two school bus stops. There's one right there and the trucks, when they come, they can't even stop. Kids have had to jump in the side of the road. One of the, one of the people were supposed to speak. I don't know why they're not here. And I stopped actually watch at the school bus, walked through, looked at it. And I know everybody's got a nickname down there. So I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't know their name, but yep. they have nicknames. And every one of them on Baldwin Street, they all wanted it. It was brought in front of the previous council and the previous council decided that it would slow down traffic or the traffic flow. They don't have the traffic flow. It's more of a safety issue. We changed the speed limit. We lowered the speed limit to 40. And, okay. it ha and, I, and I'm on that road quite a bit and I've been passed a number of times when a school bus is there getting kids. And it's one of the things that's there. And the thing is that one is separate. When we used it at, at Smithfield, 
By the church, when we put the four-way stop by the school, it worked, it slowed down traffic, and it made it a much safer environment. And that's except, why there. Except we've also heard that it's made it a more dangerous highway traffic environment because of the staggered stop signs. So let's not pretend it's safer if in fact we've created a hazard. Yeah. We, we have to be careful what we do, right? That's right. Um, this one's and, straight. And we're not debating the Baldwin Queen one yet, but I will point out that you are asking for a traffic study there as well. That's probably my thing of asking the study and going on the same thing, but yeah. it's more of a health and safety issue there with the residents oh. and all the people that are getting on the school, school bus because they speed there all the time. And when they come around that loop from the restaurant, they come right up the blind hill. And if they know there's a four way stop there, they'll, they won't go as fast to go all the way to the next stop site. So do you still want two traffic studies then? One for Ontario Street, one for Harbour Street, or one for Baldwin Street? Or do you want one study that could be more inclusive and maybe save the taxpayer a buck or two? Okay, the one that's inclusive. Councillor Tadman, would you be okay with that? I, I would be, Mayor, but the the uh, one that to Councillor LeBlanc's talking about on Baldwin, there's the bus stops twice, and that's for all the children that are riding buses. And, and it's within a few houses of each other. And uh, people are really afraid for their children there uh, because there is that uh, people come from the, the, the base, sort of the bottom of that Baldwin Street up the little knoll. And uh, it is quite dangerous. So I think it's, it's not so much a traffic study as it is to see if there really is a, a health and safety issue there. So I wouldn't necessarily include that in the over, I, I quite agree that, that we do a, an overall study of, of, of the traffic in different areas that we name, but that one in particular, I think it's, it's quite a, a dangerous place, especially when we've got a lot of children getting on and off the buses there. Right, I wonder if anyone has considered speaking to uh, student transportation about moving the bus stop. That seems like the, the cheaper alternative, frankly, at the end of the day. That's where the kids come from both Safer sides. and cheaper alternative. Where right? would you move it? I, I wouldn't. I would depend on the people at Student Transportation to identify a, a more appropriate bus stop. But they're, you know, they're not unreasonable people if you can finally get through to them. So I, I don't know. I, go ahead, Councillor Tadman. But... As you know, there's only one direct route down into Gosport, and that's Baldwin Street. So then we could possibly create more problems if, if you're having buses detour around all over the place. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what student transportation would, would come up with. So um, anyway, back to the, okay, so I'm going to go right back to the original motion, which we have in front of us. We've, we have a suggestion from staff to include a number of uh, concerning intersections. Um, and we have a motion that asks staff to consider a traffic study to identify areas on Ontario Street and Raglan Street for traffic control, and further that the study include an option to limit truck traffic on Raglan and Cedar Streets. That's the motion before me. Is there any further discussion? Go ahead. No, not really discussion to add to that. Maybe just if I can get the Director of Public Works to clarify, because we keep mentioning motion for traffic calming, but I believe that was in the budget and passed. And have you not already ordered some of the stuff that you're going to be utilizing? Director? Through your worship of the council, um, there was $25,000 approved and we've purchased six uh, radar speed signs that are solar powered and they're smaller so they can be deployed throughout the community rather than just being mounted to a single pole all year. Thank you for that. So they should be here in about five weeks. All right, thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Deputy Mayor. So we're leaving this motion as it is and we're not making it uh, a larger study. That's that correct? not what I'm hearing from council, no. Okay, thank you. At the moment, anyway. Councillor Anderson. Your um, microphone, sir. I like that, uh, the fact that we were gonna um, look at the big picture and try to save some money. Uh, well, me too, but that's not the motion before us. No, that's what I'm- that's... Can the motion be amended to that? It's your motion, sir. Yes, that's amended to, to make it into a bigger study. I like that part of it. Uh, but does it have a timeline? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm reading your motion, Councillor LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if we, if we add it to the bigger comments report, have a timeline. 
Uh, it's your choice. It's your motion. Well, there'll be an RFP. Then. It, it, you can put that in there for. So, excuse me, Mayor. Go ahead, Councillor Tadman. Uh, and if uh, Councillor Blanc would be willing, I would uh, be willing to pull this and, and write a new motion completely to, to in fact, encompass all of the, the, the places that we feel are, are you know, uh, a health and safety issue. And I like what um, Preston has brought forward. So I don't know, it's up to Councillor LeBlanc because I, I would, I would withdraw as a seconder on that motion and go the other route. Is that acceptable to you, Councillor LeBlanc? Acceptable. So may, may I suggest that rather than pulling it, because then you'll be back into the notice of motion uh, process, et cetera, et cetera. Let's defer this to the next meeting. And then when we put it on the floor as the mover and seconder, you can amend that motion to be more inclusive with your new wording. And that is just for the one for Ontario and Rival. That's right. Right now, we'll, we'll still read the one for Baldwin and Queen. So is, is that acceptable that we defer this motion? Yes, it is. Thank you. So yeah. could I have a mover? Councillor LeBlanc? I would move to defer it. Councillor Tadman, Councillor LeBlanc. Do you have a question before I read the motion? Moved by Council Tadman, seconded by Council LeBlanc, the Council defer the motion regarding Ontario and Raglan traffic study. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. All right. So we'll look forward to that coming forward at the next, at the March 7th meeting. Next motion is with regard to a traffic study at Baldwin and Queen, uh, moved by Councillor LeBlanc, second by Councillor Tadman, that Council directs staff to consider a study at the intersection of Baldwin Street and Queen Street East and West to determine if a four-way stop would be warranted. Councillor LeBlanc, this is your motion. Would you like to speak to it? Or perhaps you already have. I already have. Thank you. <laughs> is there any discussion on the motion? Councillor Bateman. Uh, just so from my understanding, who, if this goes to a study, who is that? staff that does this study or is this going outside for a consultant study to come back and if that's either way how long does such a study take so for my understanding and for the residents they'd want to know as well director parkinson through your worship the council uh, this this specific motion is something we can do in-house uh, with the assistant of the bylaw compliance person so i'm not sure what his schedule is or agenda but it, it shouldn't be terribly long to perform that there's just some communications, you know, we'd contact the OPP, we'd speak with the fire department about accidents, and we talk to the, uh, the bus drivers or the bus companies that uh, perform pickup and drop offs in that area and get their input as well. And I'm sure he already has traffic data for Baldwin Street. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, so even though it says um, consider a study, um, we're not doing an official traffic study that's that we're, we're contracting out then because that makes a difference for me. Uh, I think this can happen more easily, like what you explained. I just want to make sure that uh, that's the understanding of everyone around the table too. Yeah, after some discussion, I'll ask the mover and seconder if they'd be willing to make a, a minor amendment so that we can do exactly what the director has just discussed. You're welcome. Councillor Bateman. And just a quick follow-up, because I like hearing that, but I still think it's a good idea what you mentioned, that somebody needs to reach out to the busing company so they're made aware that... There is an issue there because whether you put a four-way stop or not, we all know people roll through stop signs and run them. So that's not going to alleviate somebody getting hit necessarily. I, I still think it's a good idea, but I think it's a good idea that we contact the busing company as well. Thank you for that. Councillor Anderson. Well, my understanding again is uh, there's a possibility or no, not a possibility. I believe a study has been done or has been being done in that exact area for a potential development in that area. So that might, if being a professional development, nothing against the quality of our great uh, uh, 
there could be added data there and information that you can use uh, if it's brought forward. But time may uh, be on our, not on our side to wait for that. So uh, perhaps we should be doing it ourselves, but there could be another study. Director Parkinson, you have a comment? Three words of the council. Um, yes, there is a development going on in that area, but the timelines are out of our control. So if this is an ur urgent nature, which it sounds like it is you know, from some councillors, then we can certainly take that on in-house to maybe come to a resolution sooner than later. And to be clear, there is a proposal for a development in that area. We, didn't, we have not seen an application come forward and we have not made any decisions at the council table. <laughs> I think that needs to be clear. <laughs> Councillor Bateman. No, I, I was just going to say the same thing because I could <laughs> almost hear my email pinging. <laughs> I said before. 100%. <laughs> Anything further from members of council? So, uh, Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think we could simplify this as uh, uh, Preston has spoke up and said they could do it in-house. My one uh, concern is that I think that it's in this motion, it's uh, Baldwin Street and Queen, but the next stop is almost, you know, stone's throw down the road at Allegan. And that's, that's exactly uh, where the new subdivision is proposed. So uh, that would be the only thing I'd like staff to see which place it would be best at. So I was thinking that we just direct staff to see if a four-way stop is warranted at the intersection of Baldwin Street and Queen or uh, Baldwin and Algon Street. I don't think we have to explain anything else. Everybody knows. So are you, you okay know. with that as the mover? Yes, I am. Okay. And, and uh, one of the stories that came to me that when I was when I was there, that I got the call in that when the bus had the four-way stop, a family with two kids going to the bus and basically had to dump into, jump into the dish because people were speeding and didn't see the stoplight. Right. And this is only in a short period of time. But what the 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 um, uh, Councillor Tadman said, I would agree to. So Councillors LeBlanc and Tadman as the mover and seconder. Would you be okay changing the wording to read the council directs staff to prepare a report regarding Baldwin Street intersections at Queen and Elgin? Sure. And that way it's not a study. That way there's no confusion. Staff's not going to go get an engineering yeah. study and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I just want to comment and be very clear that it doesn't matter what we decide uh, around the table here, we, we can't stop people from speeding or making bad decisions. And sometimes it's put on us to do something before something happens. But at the end of the day, we don't control what people don't do. Any further, Councilor Bateman? It, it's more of a comment. Maybe I can turn it into a question and similar to what the deputy mayor just said. Is there a possibility, because all this stuff, once we put it into play, if you do the traffic study and you put the four-way stops in and whatever happens on Ontario and Raglan and the other streets, I think we need constant and continuous education on the speeding. Because this time of year, we have to be honest, it's the majority of the speeding is local speeding. I know they might not want to hear that, but it's two streets over because most of our visitors come in the spring and the summer, and we're all hearing about speeding issues. So I think we have to constantly educate about similar to what you know, the MAD organization does. We all know you're not supposed yeah. to drink and drive, but we still have to constantly lecture people not to do it. And I think we have to take the same approach. It's not a one silver bullet that's going to fix this. I would agree. Councillor LeBlanc? No. Anything further from members of council? Councillor Anderson. Uh, the deputy mayor is correct. It's not our job to educate them either. Uh, but we do have people that can do that. And that's back to the enforcement discussion. So, um, friendly education at the window can might go a long way as well, but I don't think we need to be doing it. So I think we're, we're doing uh, a good job at uh, trying to nail it down. So it, it gets tighter and tighter all the time about this driving, but the bottom line is, is enforcement. I'm sorry. And the other thing is, do you counsel a tad minute to think, the residents are trying to stop some of the people that basically they're chasing the trucks down, they're following them to the end point. I, I and 
and they're getting into their faces. I'm trying to avoid all that event, uh, you know, getting that because they are, they are starting to take stuff into their own hands and chasing people down. So I told them not to do that. Don't do that anymore. Okay, thank you. There you go, Councilor Bateman. Uh, the only thing I'd add is I, I do think it's municipalities, a little bit their responsibility to educate because the county's even acknowledged that with the slow of the roll. You have to keep doing that type of stuff. It, they, they do it with the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That shouldn't be our responsibility, but we've been doing it and we're still doing it. You just have to use all those tools and remind people. And that's the only way you're going to stop it. And, and the enforcement as well. Agreed. Anything further on the motion? Do you want to read the motion? Because it's changed a little bit. It's moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Tadman. The council directs staff to prepare a report regarding the intersections of Baldwin Street at Queen Street and Elgin Street to determine if a four-way stop would be warranted. Is that good? Councillor LeBlanc? Councillor Tadman? Yes. In favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. It takes us to the motion with regard to high water bill adjustment policy with a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Rowley. The council directs staff to create a high water bill adjustment policy and further the council directs staff to provide a service agreement for council's approval. Councillor LeBlanc, this is your motion. Yes, uh, through your chair. This was brought up at the, at the budget uh, on water and sewage rates and some people that had high rates and there was some adjustment uh, with the help of uh, Director of Finance, uh, Linda Winterfield. Basically, we looked at this and we found the one for Quinty West has one in place. And basically it reads quite straightforward. If, you, if you're paying $300 every three months and all of a sudden you get a bill of $1,100, they go, did they see if you, you had a repair to your toilet, you fixed it, or some kid went and turned your tap on. Basically, you get a one-time rate as long as staff sees it and it's adjusted. It's something that's out there. It's something that I was concerned about. And uh, Council Bateman and I have been called on this a number of times. And I'm sure our councillors have too. And it's just one of the things. Um, Councillor Tadman is, is one of them that got caught in herself. She doesn't go see her toilet upstairs and basically it got a leak or it kept on flooding and she ended up with a huge bill. But it's a one-time thing. And so we're looking at it. That's where I, I, I look at that because the rates are high and I know everybody's responsible for their maintenance and their upkeep, but our municipalities have seen a way for giving when people are on fixed incomes. I thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tadman. I just want to everyone to know that I didn't get a rebate and didn't ask for one. I. I suffered the bill. <laughs> thank you for that. And the ratepayers of Brighton, thank you as well. Councillor well, Bateman. Of course they do. <laughs> uh, just for the director, so she can explain it to me, just so I fully understand, because I don't know how Quinny West works on theirs. So if somebody did call and they had a high bill, do you compare it to previous bills to see if it's actually high? <laughs> and if they do get a repair done, are we going to request it be done by a... Uh, the uh, certified plumbers or whatever the case is there any what's the parameters around doing something like that director well right now we don't have a policy and and we don't provide any rebates to our residents um we've had a lot of excuses for high water rates um you know from their sprinkler system leaking in their yard um something froze while they were away for the winter um, toilets that are leaking. We provide conservation information in our, on our website um, on how to make sure that if, if you see a high water read, that you check your toilets by putting food coloring in the tank and you know installing aerators on your taps. There's lots of ways in the website to conserve water, first of all. Um, Quinny West bills on a two month cycle, not a three month cycle. And they allow one, one um, time relief once a year with a, a receipt from the repairs. Um, the problem that we would have, and they probably also have, is that um, you're already a month into the next cycle when you find out that your last read was high. And so, you know, if you had a thousand dollar bill for a quarter, then you're probably $300 into it for the next month, next read as well. 
Um, so one-time relief on an annual basis to assist residents allowing this adjustment if they provide receipts, not just a written request because they'd all be writing for, everybody would be writing for a request of a refund or, or rebate on their water. Remember though, all the water that goes through a leaky toilet is treated. You're paying to treat it. You're paying to distribute it. So um, it's totally up to council how they wanna provide this service. And if they wanna allow for um, you know, a leak repair kind of rebate, then that's totally up to this council. Thank you, Councilor Rowley. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I too found myself in this situation as Councilor Tadman the, this last year, and I did speak to uh, Director Parkinson's about that, thinking um, it was the town's fault. And it was not, it was, it was mine. Um, however, I, I, and I didn't ask for a rebate either, um, just to let you know that as well. But I, I, I do feel compassion sometimes for some of those seniors who, um, as you say, you miss a leaking toilet or you miss a leaking tap in your basement or something. So I think if we could come around something, I'm not sure that it needs to be, you know, one relief per year. Um, that's pretty tough, I think, to deal with. That's, you know, every four billing cycle. So I, but I would like to see that maybe um, those who have, you know, struggle with um, maybe just making ends meet that we could um, certainly provide some kind of relief at a, on a one-time, on a one-time deal, but certainly doesn't need to be an annual, um, uh, annual relief, that's for sure. Right, and I would note that the original motion does uh, include information from Quinny West, but the motion before us tonight does not. So it I would anticipate that staff would bring forward best practices. Maybe not. I don't, maybe Quinny West is best practices. I don't know, but I, I would guess that we don't know either because we don't have a policy. So. Right. Could I, could I maybe then, could we do the same as what we were doing with um, the traffic study that um, this motion is on the floor that maybe we defer and uh, make sure that we have um, that, that staff can review um, maybe what Quinny West does or what our policy could um, look like? Well, right now it just says that staff create a high water billing adjustment policy and further the council direct staff drive service agreement for council's approval. Um, so I would, I would simply suggest striking the last line so it's not a fait accompli, have, have staff do their investigation right. and bring forward best practices through a, a policy if that's if council wants to go down that road of a policy. Okay. Is that fair? <clears throat> yep, that's fair and then. as the mover, Councilor Blanc, you're okay with that? Okay. Anything further on the motion? Go ahead, Councilor Bateman. I, I'd be interested in seeing that because I'd like to see Quinty West to see because you wouldn't want somebody's brother's friend who has an uncle that does plumbing on the side that just writes a receipt because I'm all in favor of looking at something, but it has to be by somebody that's licensed that when you give the relief, Otherwise, it'll just be a free for all. You have trust issues, Councillor Bateman. I can see that. <laughs> I was going to give a figure on a water water bill, but I've never heard it. My wife does that. So. <laughs> Anything further on the motion? So I have stricken the last line. Um, and so the motion just reads that we direct staff to create a high water billing adjustment policy. Um, yeah, and that would have to come back to council anyway. Right. Anything further? All those in favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. That brings us to the notice of, mo or pardon me, the motion with regard to uh, management review. It's moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor Blanc, the council directs staff to obtain three quotes from qualified human resources firms to present to all of council for review and selection. And further, the selected our HR firm be directed to conduct a management review and further that the council direct that the HR firm be advised that all members of staff shall be interviewed as part of the management review. And further that the HR firm ensures the participants interviews shall remain anonymous. And further that council directs that the HR firm be advised that all members of council shall be interviewed as part of the management review. And further that council directs the HR firm to also conduct exit interviews with staff that have resigned from the municipality with, with in the last three months. 15, pardon me, 15 months. And further that council directs the HR firm be advised that the final report shall be released directly to all of council. 
and further that the HR firm present their findings along with recommendations for Council's review and consideration. Council Rowley, this is your motion. Would you like to speak to it? I'd, I'd like to speak to it, yes, please. Um, first of all, I um, uh, have um, uh, created, created this motion and put in there um, regarding management, and I don't want that to be focused on just management. It's not labeled as just the management of the municipality. I maybe should have changed that wording to just include all of staff. I know I have it in there, but uh, like I say, I don't want it to be highlighted as just um, management. Um, as at the um, meeting that um, uh, I was not successful in calling a special meeting or a closed meeting for, um, my comments were at that time, that my intent is not um, to see this as micromanaging staff at all, but it does, I do would like to see certain um, areas of concern identified. This would be, as I said back then, a process that would be similar to what would be taking place if council was concerned maybe over an infrastructure issue that affects all of the municipality. Um, those would be my comments for right now. I might respond if someone else has. Thank you for that. Any Comments or questions from members of council? Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, I have a few questions. I don't know. Can I ask all three of them at once or do I ask each individually? Well, let's start with one and we'll go from there. Uh, I believe my questions might be for the mover. Um, just so I'm looking for some clarity. Um, the motion is very vague. Um, what is the end goal of this review to obtain what information? That's my first question. Councilor Rowley. So, um, I, th I think the end, the end goal is, um, you know, just making sure that um, the current concerns that we have received through a few, few emails, uh, specifically regarding uh, resignations and moving on. Um, and, I, and I know, uh, Mayor, you have made a couple of comments on that but, uh, the last time, but I do find some of that concerning and that, um, you know, some of these... Uh, employees that we have hired um, were hardly here a year. Um, I've, I just find some of that in, concerning. So my, whether it has to be, um, like I said, the end game here, there is, there's no end game, mm -hmm. but um, I just listen to some of those concerns, just read some of those concerns that we've had during some emails and would um, just wanna make sure that what we're doing, we're doing it in the right way. Second question. Uh, thank you. And just for clarity, I asked what the end goal was, not the end game. Um, it, it, yeah. So and, and um, that's what I said. I'm sorry. I did not mean the word end game. I said that, but um, because that does sound a little bit more suspect, then this is not a game for me. Your second question, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, exit interviews with staff that have resigned. Um, I, I do believe the CAO has already conducted exit interviews. Um, uh, I believe that's the practice. So that's kind of part of my question. And is the intent of the, uh, the maker of the motion that this information forms part of the report and becomes public knowledge? No, definitely not public knowledge. Hence the, the, the initial reason for maybe having an open, um, uh, an open and unbiased discussion in a closed uh, meeting. Um, although uh, according to the mayor at the time, that wasn't really um, acceptable. I'm not really sure why this doesn't need to be be public. I would uh, just wait to see what we hear from uh, HR. Actually, I'm going to ask Mr. Castleman if he can confirm that all employees who <clears throat> leave are offered opportunity for exit interviews. The, the quick answer is yes. Uh, uh, my recollection is that we have a policy that speaks to exit interviews uh, when people leave. And, and have those interviews been conducted in the last 15 months or so when we've uh, had resignations. Certainly anybody reporting to me, uh, they have been for sure. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, one last question for now. And uh, it is seeing as this is a re review of management, uh, who does the mover intend for the HR firm to take direction from and report to? Only council? That's, it's not clear in here. So I'm wondering. It's not, it's, it's not clear enough in here. Uh, well, I guess uh, normally when we pass motions, we pass motions and then staff runs with it. But this is a management review, so staff can't run with it. So I'm wondering who's going to be the contact person for this HR firm? Who are they going to, who's going to take the lead in this? I guess that's what well, I'm not clear and, on. And in fact, if this was an honest management review, 
we would in fact turn it over to staff to conduct the management review. So I guess the question is, what is the intent here? I would agree with the deputy mayor, it's unclear. What's unclear about hiring an HR firm if we were to I go through? I think it's clerks? unclear as to who that HR firm would report to. Yeah. I would guess because it should clerk. not be council and it should no. not be the clerk. She's why? She's a manager. It should be the CAO who reports to council. That's why. Well, then we would um, have to wait and see how that would work. Could the, could the clerk, or excuse me, then would the CAO be uh, tasked then with um, reviewing HR firms if we were to put um, an RFP for such? Uh, I'm not sure what the procurement policy is, but we do have one and we're required to confirm form with it. And I would suggest that the motion before us does not conform with our current uh, procurement policy. So could I have a suggestion then from you, Mayor, or uh, those who would know better than I, uh, what that should say? Um, I just don't know what's not clear in this based on um, the wording that I have here. I don't know how much more detail oh, you need. That council directs staff to obtain three quotes from qualified human resources firm to present to all of council for review and selection. Council does not do that. Council receives a staff report that would recommend an HR firm for the purposes of a manager. That's through the normal oh. course. Okay, so can we change that then? To It's, it's your that? motion. Okay. So how should I word that then? You've been uh, helpful with... Uh, uh, previous motions here. How would I word that then? Um, it would. It should read that council directs staff to obtain quotes for a management review from a qualified human resources firm. Okay, and using that word management, then would that um, would that make it inclusive of all members of staff? I uh, just want to make no, sure that we have that correct. It's, it's unclear as to the scope of work. I don't know what the intent here is for this scope of work. Are you asking for an organizational review? Well, maybe that's what I need to call it then. Well, why has count, why has CAO Castleman been conducting a, a organizational review for the last two years if we were going to go down this road? I just think this is the road to go down without making a whole lot of public comments. Well, I, I don't, I absolutely do not, but um, I'm happy to help you get this motion worded correctly. So is it an organizational review you're looking for? Um, and that means the next line is, is redundant unless you want to include it and further the selected HR firm be directed to conduct a management review. No, we can, we can, um, we can probably take that out if we're going to use, um, organizational review. Okay. <clears throat> And how do we guarantee that all um, former staff that have resigned in the last 15 months will be interviewed? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking for guarantees. Uh, you are in this motion. If they want to come forward, they'll come forward. Yeah. If they're asked, if they don't, they don't. Uh, in this motion, it says uh, to also conduct exit interviews with staff that have resigned from the municipality within the last 15 months. It's not an option. Well, they're private citizens. They don't have to come if they don't want to. If they want to come, they'll come. I agree. So then this file okay, stays so open we'll, forever and ever, amen. Okay, so That's then the we'll, we, can, we can change that wording. Mayor, I, I took some of this wording from the suggestion that you drafted um, at the meeting that we had. So yes, I'm but a lot of wording is missing, I notice. Uh, yeah, the part where we'd investigate council for their interference. Yes, that is missing. 
I would think that if uh, council were reviewed in this, um, if council was inter uh, interviewed in this review, that we would find that out. I have a funny feeling council's going to get interviewed anyway. Uh, that's okay. Um, so how would you want to word that line? Um, Thank you. Can I ask a question or should I wait? Uh, let's get the wording down so we can actually have conversation on the actual motion. May I offer a suggestion <clears throat> that it reads that council directs the HR firm to also conduct exit interviews with staff willing to do so that have resigned. Okay. And further that council directs the HR firm be advised that the final report shall be released directly to all of council. And further that the HR firm present their findings along with recommendations for council's review and consideration. I think that's fine. Cal uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, two things. It doesn't mention that council would be interviewed in here, correct? Number one. Yes, it does. Does it? Oh, did I miss that? Sorry. Um, and then I'm just wondering if there's a timeline um, for this or, or a desire for a timeline on this, I guess. There's, there's not in the current motion. Right. But there would be, there would be, uh... It would be nice to have a timeline. I would guess it will take uh, now the CAO to uh, research or to put an RFP together, correct? Because we would need to have that done, right? So could I ask that that be done by for the end of March? CAO? That really depends on the priorities of council. If council wishes this to be the top priority, we'll focus on it accordingly. So if we include that in the motion and the motion passes, then that will be the priority. Will you report back to council on what priority, what priorities may slip as a result of that? Yes. Thank you. So I would suggest that in the first line, Council Rowley, we say that council directs staff to obtain quotes for an organizational review from a qualified HR firm um, by March 31st. Twenty twenty-two. Anything further from members of council? Councillor Bateman. I think we have to be clear that the timeline you're talking about is just to hire and secure an HR firm because the HR firm will set the timelines on the investigation. Well, at the, at the end of the day, it won't be higher. It will be bring back a report with yeah. a recommended um, yeah. um, selection process for council. This is an unbudgeted item that my friends, I guarantee you, is going to be $80,000 or more. Just my experience in these, in these consultations and the scope of work before us, we're interviewing well over 100 people, um, and that ain't going to be cheap. So we're talking about a percentage of taxation for... Uh, what I consider to be a fool's errand, Councillor Anderson. I guess the main, one, for one of the main questions I have, what is the cost of all of this versus the uh, benefit of doing this? The cost I just heard. I don't, I don't know no, the no, actual cost, I, I'm guessing. Even if you're off 20,000, that's okay. Yeah. I, I just say, what is the, what will the benefit after we've interviewed every employee and every I guess manager and ourselves what will the benefit be I think um, uh, Councillor Anderson first first of all if I could just I'm not so sure uh, mayor that I uh, really like your term fool's errand I don't feel myself as a fool um, so I find that um, I, I don't I don't think that that was appro an appropriate comment um, you're here I couldn't hear that. I'm just Councillor Tadman saying, here, here, carry on. Oh, okay. I didn't hear where that came. Um, I guess, Councillor Anderson, over the last months, we've seen some emails with some concerns without bringing them 
out into the public. Uh, I would just hope that um, our organization is running um, as efficiently uh, as it can um, with staff resigning, being rehired. Those, those are the kind of things. We, we have worked hard initially at the beginning of this council to fill a lot of these gaps that we have. Uh, it seems that we've gone back a little bit. Yes, I, I read uh, through emails that we are rehiring again, but every time we fill up, we, fill up, we, lose a, we, we lose a staff member, we need to start over. Those things cost money as well. Hang on, Councillor Tadman, you had your hand up. Um, um. I took great offense to the that some of us on council are on a fool's errand and I don't think mayor that that is I think that's something that you should apologize for saying that um, people have concerns I was approached I don't know particulars but I was approached by a couple of councillors that were very concerned about things that are happening and I agreed to this meeting and so therefore I don't think we have any right to, they, th this, this motion is put forward here. And I think that I, I would, if I were the, the uh, councillors that moved and seconded it, I would go ahead with the motion. I don't see anything wrong with it. Thank you for your comments. Any other qu comments from members of council? Councillor Anderson. Just to help. Assuming everything goes uh, quickly to get the RP and get the, how long will this process take based on what we what we're talking about tonight? Because uh, you realize it's March now. In another week, you realize where where I'm heading. You know how long it takes to get the to get an investigation done or or detailed enough detail without. Just remember dealing with the questions, the questioning and the type of information that is very sensitive. So they do go through that sensitive process. It's not gonna be a, an overnight process. So I don't, I don't expect when that. When this report comes back to us, are we gonna be able to carry on decisions and, 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 and is there gonna be time for that factor? That Depends entirely on who's running in the election and how many are running and who's running for what positions, et cetera, et cetera. We'll have to wait until mid October, or pardon me, mid August to figure that one out. No, it sounds like this will be something that'll be left for the next council. I think that's probably likely true. Deputy Mayor? Sure, I just have uh, one more question, and uh, uh, it's for the CAO. He had mentioned that he had, he had conducted uh, uh, exit interviews because it be seems like the, the focus is on the, the people that have left or the concern over the people who have left. I haven't heard any of the other concerns, so I don't know. Um, so I, I'm wondering if the CAO could tell me whether he believes that there's uh, substantial concerns that warrant a costly management review. CAO Castleman. Uh, through you, uh, um, Mr. Mayor, um, my solicitor has advised me not to comment on my beliefs of the relative merits of the proposed organizational review. Thank you. With that, I'd like to call a vote and a recorded vote. We're not done. Anything further from members of council? Councilor Bateman. I've got a unique perspective because I've, I've missed some of this, but I did watch part of the special council meeting. I think it was held on January 31st. January 31st. And the motion that's here, I, I do believe some of it has to be tightened up because you want to know what you're going to do when you get the results and who we're going to talk to and stuff. But there was a motion presented then that covered basically what's in here plus the integrity commissioner part. And with this one, everybody needs to understand because if they do talk to all council, anything that is coming out that they are going to present that. So if they talk to all council and it shows that there's code of conduct violations, any person sitting in this room or any member of the public can file an integrity commissioner complaint. So, you know, the last motion on the 31st, everybody was, well, not everybody because it didn't pass, but there was a motion and looking for movers on, too. So this is really going to cover the same thing, just doing it in a different way. 
but you know, I don't know what the because uh, everybody's talking about the the end result, but this could show a, a whole lot of nothing, or a whole lot of everything. But it also could show there's a whole lot of interference because if they talk to council, if you've interfered, anybody can file a complaint. I'm not saying that's what it's going to show. I think part of the issue too is we're talking about because I haven't seen any of the emails or who's talked to who and stuff like that. I have no idea. I don't want to see them. I want to have it play out. For those that have seen it, I, that's where the passion is probably coming from, but I can't speak to that because I haven't seen them, right? So, Councillor Bateman, I, I want to just clarify about the emails. It's the emails that have co all of co council have been copied on. I have no other emails from anybody other than just what council has been copied on. Anything further? I, I am concerned that we are going down a road that is unnecessary, and that's why I call it a fool's errand to which I do not apologize. Uh, council staff relations are clear um, that council uh, has one direct report, and that is CAO Castleman, the CAO, whichever CAO is in the chair at the day. Any other member of staff who approaches council for a staff relations issue should be directed to please speak to their manager. And if that doesn't work to the CAO, uh, if they're a unionized employee, they should seek representation from the union. We are governed by a collective agreement, and that collective agreement is our labor relations, period, stop, full stop, in this municipality. Uh, we're going to spend an awful lot of money on, a, on an organizational review after having hired a CAO, um, whom we pay pretty good dollars to, to provide us with an organizational review. He is yet to deliver the organizational review for one department. All other departments are complete. Am I right about that? Thank you. And I'm curious, are we expecting the CAO to deliver his final report for the final department that he's organizing? Or are we to suspend that for this very expensive organizational review? I don't have an answer to that. My preference would be to have the CAO who is accountable to council provide us with that organizational review. I'm also aware that there are letters of support from unionized staff to senior management floating around. And I am aware that there's a letter from the CUPE executive reminding union members of the process because that is clearly become muddied uh, over the course of time. And the union rightfully wants to correct that as they should. I will not be voting in favor of spending $80,000 of the taxpayer's money so that we can go on what I think is a witch hunt. And I will not support this one bit. And I don't think anybody in this room should either. Councilor Bateman. My only confusion around that then is watching the 31st, if there had been a seconder for that motion, you would have been paying twice as much. No, sir. Uh, an integrity commissioner investigation is significantly cheaper because it would interview the seven members of council. We already know that. We've had one. Correct. But that motion, when I read it, incorporated this other stuff as well. It mentioned hiring the outside firm. So I was just trying to help council yeah. go down a road that could get us through a meeting. And it was clear that council did not want to go down that road that evening because yeah. they wanted to water down the motion. But if I had a pass, we'd be in the midst of both an HR firm investigation and an integrity commissioner investigation. We'd be in the middle of an integrity investigation but we would only be at the point where someone would be investigating HR firms for our for quotes at the moment. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, just to follow, because this is just me sitting at home because I was confused when watching that meeting because watching it, I was, I, I know at the start of the meeting, the agenda was read and I believe Councillor LeBlanc tried to amend the agenda. I can't remember the reasoning why I think he wanted an amendment on something and I don't know what it was for because I wasn't here. Couldn't do it because the, amend the agenda was approved. But then that motion was added with no amendment to the agenda. So that whole meeting really should have died at the point. You're where, absolutely correct. Because there is no motion added to the floor for the other one. You're absolutely correct. But I did not want to waste a thousand dollars of taxpayers money to sit around the horseshoe and not at least try to advance the business of council. Yeah, so when I was watching, because then, you know, my email goes off and I see that the, that, that motion was emailed to everybody, which 
Yeah, so it, it's a bit confusing. And if it was confusing for me, I can because I'm sitting there as a counselor sitting at home as a citizen, and I was confused watching that because it should have died at the point where the meeting didn't go in a closed. You're absolutely and, correct. And a motion was presented when it shouldn't have been presented. Procedurally, your essence is going to be, it, it, it's different, but the integrity commissioner can still get involved based on what's here because they're going to present their findings and they're not going to hide whatever a counselor says to them, regardless of what it is. So yeah. if that's the road everybody goes down, you got to be careful what you wish for because you never know what you're going to find, right? <laughs> that's correct. Counselor Tadman, you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, Mayor, um, you you think we're doing a witch hunt and we're on a fool's errand. Um, Correct. Uh, and you don't wish to apologize. So I will not be apologizing, no. I hope that's on the record. I can but, assure you it is. Yeah, well, when I look back at the roles of, of council, the one thing that I always am conscious of is that we maintain the financial integrity of the municipality. It's not, it's not cheap to advertise for new positions. It's not cheap um, to keep um, training new people. You keep on about this is going to cost a lot of money, but in the end, it might save the taxpayers a lot of money. Uh, it isn't just a few around this table that are concerned. I have had more people express to me, which I never respond to because I don't know, but people want to know why are people leaving? Why can't you hold on to people in this municipality? So um, I don't necessarily think that uh, what, uh, Councillor Bateman and, and Councillor Rowley have brought forward is a witch hunt or a fool's errand. I think they want to get to the bottom of, of what is the best practices for us and financially is, uh, is, it is our responsibility. So I'll leave it at that, but um, um, hopefully you won't make any more um, derogative remarks about people on council it's not really your role to to put people down i want to be clear that i have been not derogatory to any member of council i have suggested that we are on a fool's errand i haven't called anyone around the horseshoe a fool and i am suggesting that this is a witch hunt i am not suggesting that any single member has done anything other than perhaps we are going down a road of trying to identify one person by developing an eighty thousand dollar HR firm investigation. It seems a bit much to me, Deputy Mayor. I think I'm done, I'm ready to vote. Thank you. Uh, a recorded vote has been requested by Councillor LeBlanc. Hmm. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Connect? No. Councillor Ron Anderson? No. Councillor Mark Bateman? Based on the rules of council and procedural bylaw, I have to say yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Based on the role of council and our responsibilities as members of council, I must say no. It's carried. Thank you. There's no unfinished business on this agenda that takes us into bylaws. The first bylaw is with regard to purchase back lot 33 Sharp Road. It's moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Rowley. The council gives a bylaw, first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement of purchase and sale of lands Part Lot 33, Concession B, Brighton, Parts 1, 2, and 3, on Plan 39R, 13728, Sharp Road. Is there any discussion? Deputy Mayor. I think it's supposed to be Lot 10, is it not? It's, it's lot, lot 33 is the larger lot. Lot 10 is the industrial park lot designated by Brighton. So it's legally, the legal description is Part Lot 33. We're okay to leave it as is. Anything further from members of council? 
All in favor? Any opposed? Motion's carried. Next bylaw is with regard to grant funding for the uh, pop-up retrofit and design and construction. Moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor LeBlanc. The council gives a bylaw. It's for second and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and the CAO to execute a grant funding agreement between the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton and the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario for Main Street pop-ups, retrofit design and construction. Is there any discussion? Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think this is a good news story for uh, for the municipality. I know uh, we've discussed some of this uh, not only uh, at our economic development uh, committee meetings, but uh, at the DBIA as well. And they're very supportive of this. So i um, glad to see that this uh, initiative will move forward. Thank you for that. Any further comment? All in favor? Is there any opposed? Motions carried. That takes us to a grant funding agreement for the pop-ups and the old canteen building retrofit. It's moved by Councilor Tadman, seconded by Councilor Bateman. The council gives a bylaw. It's for second and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and the CAO to execute a grant funding agreement between the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton and the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs for pop-ups, old canteen building retrofit. Is there any discussion? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion's carried. That brings us to reports of advisory committees of council, reports, minutes, and council reports. The first is the Economic Development Advisory Committee with a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The council received the January 13th, 2022 Economic Development Advisory Committee minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion's carried. The next is Community Events Advisory Committee with a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The council received the November 2nd, 2021 Community Events Advisory Committee me meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. And the next is Accessibility Advisory Committee, moved by Deputy Mayor Kinnick, seconded by Council Rowley. The Council received the December 10th, 2021 Accessibility Advisory Committee meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. And finally, the Heritage Advisory Committee, moved by Councillor Anderson. Seconded by Councillor Bateman, the council received the January 10th, 2022 Heritage Advisory Committee meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion's carried. That brings us to reports, minutes of statutory committees, boards and external agencies. The only item before us is the Lower Trent Conservation Authority meeting minutes moved by Deputy Mayor Connect. Seconded by Councilor Rowley, that Council received the December 9th, 2021 Lower Trent Conservation Authority Board meeting minutes. Is there any discussion? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion is carried. We have no correspondence before us. There, are, there is one piece of FYI correspondence being the Northumberland County update, February 14th to 25th with a motion from Deputy Mayor Connect, seconded by Council Rowley. The Council received the Northumberland County update February 14th to 25th, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion's carried. Madam Clerk, are you aware of anyone joining us for question period? No. Thank you. That takes us to a motion to proceed into closed session. Once I read the motion, we will end the YouTube live stream for the duration of the meeting and excuse all members of staff who are not involved in participation of these three items, three items.
It's moved by Councilor Bateman, seconded by Councilor Tadman. The council resolve itself into closed session February 22nd, 2022 at 8.35 p.m. Pursuant to the Ontario Municipal Act 2001 as amended, subsection 239.2b, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employee members, appointment for committee members to the Trails Committee and the Community Events Committee, and C, proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, purchase of property for public trail link. Is there any discussion? All in favor? There being none opposed, that motion's carried.